Assalamualaikum and greetings to everyone. My name is Fandom Siti Hajar Bantu Nushuddin and in this video lecture, I will explain on chapter 5 which is prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. Let's begin! But before we move forward, let's take a look on the lecture contents. In previous uh, video, you have learned about the microscopy. So in this lecture, we will cover on 5.2 the importance of compartmental organization which is the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells so let's do some recap from chapter one do you still remember the modern cell theory yes there are three cell theories the first one all organisms are composed of one or more cells second one the cells are the basic unit of structure and life for all organisms and the third theory cells can arise only by division from the pre-existing cells okay now let's recognize the three basic types of cells I'm sure all of you can name any types of cells for example we have animal cells the plant cells and also the bacterial cells but there are some other cells you will learn in the upcoming semester but let's stick to the three types of cells first all of these cells are classified into two broad categories which is the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. The prokaryotic cells exist for billions of years on earth and believed to be the first cells to evolve and all prokaryotic organisms are always unicellular which means they are only a single cell. On the other hand, the eukaryotic cell appeared on Earth long after prokaryotic cell but more advanced, or in other words, they are evolved. They can be either unicellular or multicellular. Let's further discuss the prokaryotic cells first. The prokaryotic cells terminology is taken from a Greek word where pro means before and karyo means nucleus. Therefore, prokaryotic means before the existence of nucleus. These prokaryotic cells do not have nucleus or the lacking of membrane-bound nuclei. They also have no double membrane organelle. They are very small with a diameter range between 0.1 to 5 micrometer and all of them are various in shapes. They can be either coccus form, bacillus form, spiral form and so on and so forth. There are more about prokaryotes. Prokaryote is the simplest types of cell but it is the largest group of organisms. Although they are very basic organisms, they are actually very important in biology. Most of them can be found in a huge range of environments such as places like deep sea vents or extremely hot environments. All prokaryotes possess five common features such as the cell wall, plasma membrane, cytoplasm, ribosome, and circular DNA. Additional structure like capsule, plasmid, flagella, and pili may present in some other prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells no nucleus present. Only circular DNA found in the central part of the cell within a darkened region called nucleoid. The examples of prokaryotic organisms such as blue-green algae, actinomycetes, mycoplasma, and also bacteria. Okay, let's discover the structure of the prokaryotic cells. This is the diagram of prokaryotes. We will start with the layer covering the inner cell, the plasma membrane, the cell wall, and also the capsule. Let's zoom in. So, the capsule is the outermost layer of prokaryotic cell, which will protect the bacteria from drying out by desiccation. It is a slimy and sticky as for the adhering process. The second layer or the middle layer is the cell wall which is made of peptidoglycan to prevent the cell from bursting and also maintaining the shape of the bacteria. And plasma membrane which is the underneath of the cell wall is to cover up the inner part of the cell. Okay, next is the cytoplasm. It is a semi-solid structure containing the enzyme and also other solutions. 
prokaryotes also have genetic bacteria such as DNA. Again, I would like to highlight that prokaryotic cells do not have nucleus, but the DNA are free-floating in the cytoplasm within the nucleoid region. There is no membrane separating the DNA from the rest of the cell. That's why we call this as naked DNA. Some prokaryotes may have small circular loops of DNA called plasmids, which carry a genetic information for resistance and it can be transferred between bacteria in a process called conjugation. Prokaryotes have ribosomes for protein synthesis but they are actually smaller compared to eukaryotic cells with 70 spadework and they are scattered throughout the cytoplasm. Next is pili, a little extension short hair-like structure around the outside layer and these are used for attachment and adhering in reproduction activity. Last but not least, the flagella, a filamentous protein structure which assists them for movement. It will spin around like a propeller motor as shown like in this picture. Alright, all the description on the structure and function I have explained just now can be summarized inside this table, so you may take a look on the lecture notes later. So in the next presentation slide, we'll be discussing on the second category of the cell, which is the eukaryotic cell. The characteristic of eukaryotic cell. The terminology of eukaryotic cell also taken from the Greek word where eu stands for true and karyo means nucleus. Thus, in essence, eukaryotes mean cell with nucleus. These organisms have more advanced structural composition compared to prokaryotes and they are capable to perform more complex functions. The true nucleus contained in a membrane-bound structure. Compared to prokaryotes, eukaryotes have few double membrane organelles. The size of eukaryotes range between 10 to 100 micrometer in diameter and they also have a variety of shapes. There are more about eukaryotic cells. These organisms have three basic structures, which is the nucleus, cell membrane, and cytoplasm with organelles. The nucleus is surrounded by a complex nuclear membrane, and mostly eukaryotic cells commonly can be found in soil and aquatic, and some of them are symbiotes of other organisms. The examples of the eukaryotes are the animal cells, plant cells, fungal cells, and protists. Okay, now let's discover the structure of eukaryotic cells. The numerous structure found in the cytoplasm can be separated into two groups, the endomembrane system and also the organelles. Here, I have listed all the structures and organelles that make up the eukaryotic cells. They are the nucleus, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria chloroplast, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, cytoskeletons, peroxisomes, vacuoles, plasma membrane, and the last one is the cell wall. So remember guys, these are all the structure and organelles that possess in the eukaryotes. Alright, so this is the diagram of animal cell with a proper label organelle. So you can see here all the structure of uh, organelles that present in the animal cell. So here is the structure or the diagram of plant cell with a proper label organelles. Alright, so let's summarize what we have learned in this video. So let me discuss the prokaryotic cells versus the eukaryotic cells. In this table, it shows the differences between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The major difference here is prokaryotes do not have nucleus, while the eukaryotes, they possess a nucleus. And the other differences you may read in your lecture notes. 
However, apart from the differences, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells share some common features like the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm, the DNA or the genetic material, and also the ribosome. As you can see here, nuclear region only present in the prokaryotes, while nucleus only in eukaryotes. Alright, so that's the end of our topic. I hope all of you understand and can figure out the differences and similarities between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. But the structure and organelles for eukaryotic cell will be further explained in the next video. So stay tuned everyone. So these are all the references for you to refer. And thank you from me. Bye bye.